So finding an equation of a line from two points. So we have four examples here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the process is. The process is actually simple if you understand the equation of the line and then you understand how to find a slope and then the uh, y-intercept. Um, but of course if you've never done it then it's uh, not that simple. Okay, So let's take a look at these examples and if you want to see kind of introductory uh, information with regards to equations of the line, specifically y is equal to mx plus b. I'm going to put up a link up above to that video, which goes into quite a lot of different details on graphing uh, the lines, talking about slope and intercepts. So if you take the first example, you have basically two points. And that's really all you need to ever find the equation of a line in the two dimensions. Now, with this example, before I get into it, um, keep in mind that for your equation of a line, when you are thinking about the equation as y is equal to mx plus b, so you have a relationship between y and x, and really the only thing that you are looking for is the slope and then the y-intercept. But you have only two points. Now, in order to find the slope, so first, number one, you can go back and recall that the slope is equal to, so y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. Now, what is, you know, y2, y1, x2, x1? Well, if you take this, for example, this particular example here, so this would be point one, so this would be x1. Okay, comma y1. Okay, so those are the actual values, and then this would be your point number two. So this is um, x number two. So this is x2, and then this is y2, and the same thing happens for every single thing. Now, what you choose as the first point or second point actually doesn't matter. The slope is going to be uh, equal um, no matter what you choose. But once you do make the choice which one is point one and which one is point two, then please be consistent. So if I take this example right here, so let me copy this down, bring it a little bit down right here so that we can find the slope. So let me paste it. All right, so those are my values. So now I can go ahead and substitute it in. So y2, so y2 is six, so six minus, okay, so in this case it's five all over, and then x2, so x2 is two, and then minus, now notice that x1 is negative one, so we have to put negative one here in brackets. And if you simplify, you'll get one in the numerator and then in the denominator, so the negative and negative will cancel, so it'll be positive, so this will become three. So that's your slope, your slope is one over three. So now that you have a slope, you're basically almost there, you have y is equal to, so this is one over three x, plus now your b. So what you don't know is still your y-intercept. And sure, you can graph the points and kind of figure out where the line crosses the y-axis, um, but why guess? So the step number two in this process of finding out, so step number two right here, is that you will take your equation, so this equation right here, once you have the slope, and you will pick a point and substitute it for y and for x. So we can pick any point. So for instance, I can take this first point right here. So that particular point is negative one and five. All right, so that would be, so this is your x, this is your y. <clears throat> and if you're substituted into the equation, so what we're gonna have is five is equal to one over three, negative one plus b. And the only thing that is unknown is b, and that b you can solve for. So I can change this up, so this is gonna be five is equal to negative one over three plus b. You can bring this over to the other side, so you're gonna get five plus one over three, and this is your b. So this is really just five and a third. <clears throat> Now we don't typically write these in mixed number format, 
Now you could, so your final equation would have been this, 1 over 3x plus 5, this is 1 third. But typically what we will do is we will take this and just leave it as an improper fraction. All right, so if an improper fraction, then what that would be is y is equal to 1 over 3x plus, and then 5 over 3 is 16 over 3. And that comes from just 3 times 5, which is 15, plus the 1. And that's just your fractions that you have to know. And there you have it. So you found your equation of a line. So step one, find your slope, substitute your values in. Step two, once you have your partial relationship between y and x, so you have found your slope, pick a point, doesn't matter which point you pick, substitute it back in, and then solve for b. And that's what you will have. So I encourage you to do that. So that was the first example. So let's take a look at another example. Now I've kind of made these arbitrarily. So if I take this example next, so I'm going to copy it down. So let's go through that process again. So here are my two points. So step number one, we have to find the slope. All right. So step one, find the slope. So M, so I'm going to say this is point one, this is point two. So y2, so 20, minus 18, so notice 20, minus 18, all over. Now, negative 9, so that's right here, minus 18, and I have my slope. So that's going to be 20 minus 18, which is 2. And notice negative 9 minus 18, all right? So it's not very convenient, but it is negative 27. So this becomes negative 27. So your slope is negative 2 over 27. Where the negative is placed doesn't matter. We typically try to put it on top or in front. All right. So we have a small slope. It is negative. So the line would have been going in this direction. Okay. So this is what we have there. Now, once we have this, now it's step number two. So we plug it back into our equation. So negative 2 over 27x, and now we have to find our b. All right, so now we have to find this. So pick any point out of these and then substitute it back. All right, so let's say I'll pick this point right here, and let's substitute it. So y is 18 equal to, so negative 2 over 27. x is also 18 plus b, so that's what you have. So not very convenient, all right? So notice that, okay? So what you will have is negative two over 27 times 18. Now I can actually reduce this a little bit to make it simpler for me. So notice 18 and 27. So I know that three actually goes into both of them. So this is gonna be six divided by three, and then this is uh, going to be nine, all right? And I can reduce even that. So notice that six over nine is just two over three. So that's kind of convenient. So this is gonna be two over three. So we have 18 all over negative two over three times two. So that makes it a lot nicer. Now, if I multiply this, so this would be negative four over three, 18 plus B. So that's what we have there bring this over to the other side. So 18 plus, all right, four over three is equal to B. So this is what we have. And again, so we can now change this thing, so this whole thing, right, to an improper fraction, because it's just 18 and four over three. So you can just, this is 18, four over three, okay, or this is 19 and one third, because notice four and one, okay, so this right here is one and one third. And now for this, okay, so you're gonna say three times 19, so three times 19, so you can do that, you get 57, plus the one, plus the one, so this is 58 over three. All right, so that's your B. That's your y-intercept. So your your y-intercept is 19 and a third. So it's not a very nice one, but that's 
that's the point, right? It doesn't always kind of nicely work out. So your overall equation, so in this case, my slope, negative, so this was, sorry, negative two over 27, x and plus, this is 58 over three. So this is really ugly, but that's what you would have. So that's example number two. All right. Now, the other examples that you have here, so I just wanna show you what happens. Okay, so with this one, so these were put in on, on purpose. Okay, so let me copy this down. Let me paste it. So now again, so the steps is, if you wanna find the equation, you need the slope. All right, so what is the slope here? M equals, so 18, so Y, so it's right here, minus four, all over. And now you have eight minus eight. And look what you run into, you run into 14 over zero. And from slope point of view, if this happens where you're dividing by zero, it's an undefined slope, and it actually means it's a vertical line, right? So it is a vertical line. So there is no official slope. So the equation for this, because you can't put it as y is equal to mx plus b, because there is no official slope. Um, the only thing that happens here is, and also because it's vertical, okay, so there's gonna be no official y-intercept that we can find. But notice that this point, okay, so it always goes to the same x. So this is really, so if you were graphing this through, so this is your eight, and what you have is you have this line, which is going through eight all the way up, okay? So it's going like this. That's your vertical line. And the way that you would write this, whenever you notice that it is a vertical line, this is just x is equal to eight. That's your actual equation right because there's no official slope it's an undefined slope it's vertical and there is no y-intercept here so i just wanted to point that out to you because that can happen the last example that you have so this one if i take this example right here and copy it down so let me bring it down here so this is another special case, um, and it is special. Notice that your y's are the same. So if you, when you're trying to find your slope, okay, you're gonna have negative five minus negative five all over four minus zero, and you notice that this right here, so this minus this will be zero all over four. So your slope is zero. So from remembering slopes, you know, this is a flat line, okay? So you have a straight flat line, which just goes through negative five. So if you are graphing this out, what you, what you find is you have this line going here through negative five, okay? So your equation is just y is equal to negative five because the slope is zero, okay? Or you can write it like this, okay? just for redundancy in terms of that zero. So you have two special cases here, so a vertical line and then a horizontal line, so be aware of those, and then how to actually write them out as an equation. And then you have two examples with your standard, kind of not an easy way of finding and your y is equal to mx plus b. So those four examples should help you Okay, so try them out. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.